Hello, welcome to The Chain Rule. My name is Tuesday J. Johnson. I'm a lecturer at the University of Texas El Paso and an assistant professor at Doniana Community College. This specific lecture is for Math 1411 Calculus at UTEP. Chapter 2, Differentiation, follows Larson's 11th edition calculus text. This is section 2.4, The Chain Rule. A little bit of background knowledge. First of all, in order to completely understand the chain rule, you really need to understand composition of functions. If you need a review of this topic, I have a video on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's called 1508 Section 1.8 Combinations of Functions. And in it, I specifically talk about composition. So a quick review, composition of functions is evaluating one function with another and it's frequently written as y equals f evaluated at g of x. We have the standard definition of composition. That's a composed with. That's an open circle. There we go. We rewrite it as f evaluated at g of x. So if you're a little more familiar with that notation, there you go. And in this, I'll refer to f as the outside function on the outside of the parentheses, and g is the inside of the function. So g is the one that I'm putting into the radical or into uh, a square or whatever it might be. So here's the chain rule. If y, which is equal to f of u, is a differentiable function of u, and u, which is equal to g of x, is a differentiable function of x, then y equal to f evaluated at g of x is a differentiable function of x, and dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx, or the derivative of the composition is derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. I'll say that again. Derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. Let's look at some examples. After we see this general power rule, if y equals u of x all to the n power, where u is a differentiable function of x and n is a rational number, then we think of u of x as the inside function and to the power of n as the outside. Well, we know to the power of n, the derivative is n to the power of n minus 1, and we leave that inside alone and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. Whether you want to call it du dx or u prime, either way, same thing. So the general power rule is a specific uh, example of the chain rule. So let's take a look at some derivatives. Now, first of all, uh, the 2 is a coefficient, just hanging out there. 6 minus x squared is inside of a fifth power. So I'm going to let u be 6 minus x squared, and I know that derivative is negative 2x. My outside is going to be the 2 something to the fifth, and we're going to call it u because that's exactly what we put into it, right? So 2u to the fifth has derivative 10u to the fourth. Putting these together, we have y prime equals 10u to the fourth times a negative 2x, right? dy du times du dx. Replace u with what it actually is in the given statement of the problem, 10 times 6 minus x squared all to the fourth power times negative 2x, and I'm going to multiply through, and there we go. And you can see in the top step here, I have dy du times du dx. And if you were to skip that whole idea of the y and the u and just do derivative of the outside, bring down the 5, multiply it by the coefficient 2, leave the inside alone, subtract 1 from the exponent, multiply by the derivative of the inside. So you can see this in two different ways exactly how we get to our derivative. If g of x is the square root of the polynomial x squared minus 2x plus 1, then my inside will be x squared minus 2x plus 1, the derivative of which is 2x minus 2. My outside is the square root of something. Something, generic term, specifically it's the square root of this quadratic. It's a square root of u, and I know the derivative of the square root is one-half u to the negative one-half, which I can simplify as one over two a square root of u. So the derivative of g is dy du, which I just found here, y prime, times du dx, that's my u prime, replace my u with what's 
defined to be u, x squared minus 2x plus 1. That's how we defined our variable u. And if I take the 2 that's in front of my radical and I factor a 2 out of the numerator, I can simplify to get x minus 1 all over the square root of x squared minus 2x plus 1. Looking at this bottom line, we have the derivative of the outside, that's 1 half, and then a square root in the denominator, leave the inside alone, and then times the derivative of the inside. Let's do another example. If y equals a minus 5 over t plus 3 to the third power, I'm going to put t plus 3 as my inside, my u, and u prime, the derivative of t plus 3, is just 1. My outside is the negative, the 5 in the numerator, and then something cubed, and that something is u. I'm going to rewrite this as minus 5 u to the negative 3, so I can find the derivative, which is 15 u to the negative 4. Remember the overall derivative is the derivative of the outside, leaving the inside alone, times the derivative of the inside, 1. Replace my u with the t plus 3, and I'm good to go. Now, finding my derivative, I have a quotient rule, but within the quotient rule, I have a chain rule. So, if y prime, using the quotient rule, will have low, the square root of x to the fourth plus four, d high, the derivative of x is one, minus x, right, high, times the derivative of low. And this derivative of the square root, I wrote separately, uh, all over denominator squared. We can't forget that denominator squared. But I didn't find this derivative yet. We need to use the chain rule to find the derivative of the radical. So focusing on the denominator only, our inside is u equals x to the fourth plus four with its derivative four x cubed. Our outside is the square root of u, and where w, right, I'm just looking at the denominator, the derivative of the square root of u, you're gonna get so tired of that one. It's always one over the quantity two square root of u. So now the derivative of the denominator itself is one over two square root of u times four x cubed and the 4 and the 2 simplify to give me 2x cubed in the numerator and a square root of x to the 4th plus 4 in the denominator. Let's put this all together. Substituting what we know, we have low d high minus high d low all over low squared. Remember the square root squared just becomes x to the 4th plus 4. And since it's already positive, we don't have to worry about absolutes. This is ugly. A fraction within a fraction, a complex fraction, we should simplify but we're gonna just leave it here anyway. That's algebra. As long as you understand the calculus, I'm happy. Let's find the derivative of the function h of t, which is the quantity t squared over t cubed plus two all squared. Now my inside is a quotient. To find the derivative of the quotient, I use the quotient rule. The outside is just something squared. The derivative of the outside is just two times something. So the derivative of h of t overall is 2u, right, derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, this u, times the derivative of the inside, ugly quotient rule, replace u with what it actually is equal to. I simplified over here in the quotient rule a little bit. I started multiplying things through. When I multiply completely, I'll have 2t squared in the numerator of the second piece, we're going to have a negative t to the fourth and a positive 4t. The denominator will have t to the third plus two three times. Once from this piece and twice from our quotient rule, three times. Oh, this is a nested chain rule and it's gonna take patience. Write out what you do at each step, it's gonna be easier. So I'm gonna write it step by step, here we go. The derivative of f of x, my inside first, uh, let's in this underline here, this is my inside. My outside is to the third power, so my derivative is, bring down the three, leave the inside alone, and then subtract one from the exponent. Multiply that by the derivative of the inside. So now I'm looking at this derivative. The derivative of two is zero, the derivative of something to the fourth power is four times that something to the third power. And then I can't forget, I still have the derivative of the inside. 
Well, what's the derivative of the inside? That's the 2x. I have the derivative of something cubed, leave the inside alone, times the derivative of 2 plus x squared plus 1 all over the fourth, times the derivative of x squared plus 1. So a step at a time. Leave that. Take the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, now find the derivative of the next inside. Leave what you had, find the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, times the derivative of the inside. So each time we just kind of work our way further inside of this nested chain rule. Find the derivative of the function. If I have y equals sine of pi x, there's kind of an unwritten parentheses around the argument of the uh, trig function. So sine of parentheses pi x. The derivative of sine is cosine. Leave the inside pi x alone and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of pi x is pi. So derivative of the outside, cosine. Leave the inside alone. Maybe I'll use some colors. Here's the outside, and here's the inside. The derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, derivative of the inside. And then we'll rewrite it, of course, so that our coefficient of pi doesn't somehow sneak inside of our cosine. The cosine of 1 minus 2x all squared. I'm going to do some serious nesting here. Now, the furthest inside is the 1 minus 2x. What's being done to the 1 minus 2x? Well, it's being squared. And what's being done to that thing squared? Well, we're taking the cosine of it. So when I find the derivative, I'm going to take the derivative of cosine which is negative sine of u, and then I'm going to multiply by the derivative of u. What is that? Well, uh, derivative of cosine was negative sine of u, so I replace u with v squared. That's what I have it defined to be. The derivative of u, where v is my variable, will be 2 times v, but now we have to take the derivative of the inside. So I still have my minus my sine. I replace v with what it is, the 1 minus 2x, all squared times 2 times, I replaced v with 1 minus 2x. The derivative of v is a minus 2. Again, let's look at our nesting here. We have an outside, and then we have an inside, and then we have a super inside. So when I find the derivative, I'm going to have the derivative of the outside. I'm going to leave the inside alone. Then I'm going to take the derivative of the inside, I'm going to double, in, double underline that, leave the inside alone, derivative of the inside. Keeps nesting. We rearrange so that we can collect all of our terms. Negative 2 and a positive 2 gives us a 4, and it's positive because of another negative out here. We have the 1 minus 2x and sine of 1 minus 2x all squared. Nice little simplification makes it easier to type in if you're using online homework, specifically WebAssign. All right, so find the derivative of the function. You try it first. Hit pause, and then we'll see it all together. Here we go. Y equals 3x minus 5 cosine of pi x all squared. Derivative of 3x is 3 minus sine 5. All right. Derivative of cosine is minus sine. We're going to leave the pi x squared all alone. And then we're going to find the derivative of the pi x squared. So I keep writing down what I've already found, looking at this derivative. The derivative of pi x squared, we bring down the 2, leave the pi x alone, subtract 1 from the exponent, so it's pi x to the first, and then multiply by what was being squared, the inside, derivative of the inside. The derivative of pi x is pi. And so we'll have, again, some nesting here. We have cosine on the outside. We have this stuff squared on the inside and then it super inside. So the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone. Derivative of the inside, leaving the other inside alone. Derivative of the super inside. Yes, I said super inside. And then we combine, we have three 
I see a, nine, a negative five and a negative makes positive five. There's a two over here, so we'll make that 10. A couple of pi, so that's pi squared x sine of pi x all squared. A lot easier to type the bottom line. All right, back to equations of tangent lines. We're gonna find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of f at the given point. If our, our function f, which I've called y, because I guess names don't matter, 4x cubed plus 3, all squared, we're at the point negative 1, 1. So an equation of a tangent line needs a slope and a point. We're given our point, we have to find the slope, but remember the slope is the value of the derivative. Let's find the derivative first. Bring down the 2, leave the inside alone to the first power. Multiply by the derivative of the inside. To simplify this, because I need to use it, I'm going to evaluate. I don't want a mess to evaluate. I'm going to simplify using algebraic techniques. First thing I'm going to do is multiply my 2 times 4x cubed plus 3, and that's 8x cubed plus 6. Still have my 12x squared out back. So let's multiply that through. I should get 96x to the fifth plus 72x squared. And at a x value of negative 1, my derivative is negative 24. With a slope of negative 24 and the given point negative 1, 1, we can write the equation of a tangent line using the point slope form. y minus 1 equals a negative 24, x minus a negative 1, that's an x plus 1. When I distribute, I'll get y minus 1 equals negative 24x minus 24, add 1 to both sides, and I have y equals negative 24x minus 23. Let's do another one. Find an equation of the tangent line to the graph of f at the given point. This time I have named it correctly. f of x equals tan squared of x. Now in this case the tangent is being squared, whereas we saw previous examples where the pi x or the 1 minus 2x was being squared. So the thing on the inside of the trig function was being squared. This time it's the tangent being squared and it's at the specific point pi over 4 comma 1. Now, rewriting tangent squared of x as all of tangent of x is squared. Our derivative is derivative of the outside, 2, leave the inside alone, tangent of x, times the derivative of the inside, the derivative of tangent is secant squared of x. Evaluating at pi over 4, 2 tangent of pi over 4 times secant squared of pi over 4, well tangent of pi over 4 is 1, Secant of pi over 4 is 1, oh no, what is it? It's square root of 2, right? Because it's a reciprocal of the cosine of pi over 4. And if it's the square root of 2 and I square it, that's how I get my 2. Of course, there's 2 on the outside. 2 times 1 times 2 is 4. That's my slope. I want an equation. With a slope of 4 and the given point, we will have y minus 1 equals 4 parentheses x minus pi over 4. When I distribute, that's y minus 1 equals 4x minus pi. And adding 1 to both sides, y equals 4x minus pi plus 1. Leave it like this. This is the exact answer. We don't want decimal approximations. Chain rule. Keep track of your insides and outsides. Label them as necessary. Review composition of functions if you need to. Thank you.